Hi friends, here is the full lore story for Revenant Reborn in Apex Legends. Revenant, the killbot simulacrum you know today, started life as a normal human. Born Caleb Cross over 300 years before the Apex Games, he would grow up to be the mercenary syndicate's greatest assassin, sent on missions to eliminate the enemies of anyone that paid him enough. One day, the syndicate would hire him to kill a man called Bob. You see, Bob overheard something he shouldn't have. Caleb's job was to make sure Bob never told a soul. Of course, the syndicate was involved, and long story short, Caleb Cross ended up killing Bob's wife and two children. But after tracking Bob to Gaia, instead of killing him, Caleb left him alive to suffer the pain of loss. Bob wouldn't leave well enough alone though, and eventually this would lead to Bob getting his revenge in a pretty horrific way. Now I'll leave out the gory details, but put simply, he ended up drowning Caleb Cross face first into a barrel of sewage, and I'm talking raw untreated sewage, which is pretty gross. Sadly for Caleb Cross, that would be the end of his human life. Of course, Hammond Robotics valued Caleb far too much to let his life end there though, and this would end up with Caleb turning into the first ever simulacrum, or at least the first successful simulacrum, and thus, Revenant was born. For something like 315 years, he would be sent on missions to kill enemies of the Syndicate, all the while thinking he was still human, with the ability to switch into a new shell while his source code was being protected and kept safe. Until one day, on a mission to kill two thieves and make a little girl an orphan in the process, a glass shard would end up wedged in his neck. This one glass shard somehow affected Revenant's ego retention system, which is a system that's built into simulacrums to ensure their mental stability. Because as you might be able to guess, someone looking in the mirror and realising they're a murdering robot with the mind of a human can be pretty traumatic. Anyways, this event led to Revenant finally realising what he is. And this, along with his system degradation over the years, as well as the influx of all his memories coming back, including the feeling of dying over and over again, changed Revenant from a controlled syndicate assassin into an uncontrollable killing machine with no morals or limitations. To quench his thirst for killing, the syndicate would eventually find a solution by putting Revenant in the Apex games. Enter Loba Andrade, the daughter of the two thieves that Revenant killed. She would enter the games with her life's goal of revenge against Revenant for killing her parents and ruining her life. Upon discovering the location of Revenant's source code, of which destroying it is the only way to kill Revenant for good, Loba would enter the Hammond Robotics facility under Skulltown and attempt to destroy the source code in revenge for her parents. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite go to plan. Revenant's source code is then sent to Samathi and Loba ends up accidentally destroying Skulltown. This in part leads to her joining the games so she can get her revenge on Revenant, but also because the Syndicate need her to find something a deal which she's happy to take in exchange for information from the Syndicate on where Revenant's source code has actually been sent to. After retrieving what the Syndicate wanted, which turned out to be Asher's head, Loba receives the information on the location of Revenant's source code, Enter Olympus. After some back and forth, Loba realises Revenant actually wants to die, and thus, She's changed her mind about destroying Revenant's source code. Instead, she uses the Phase Runner on Olympus to send it off to Gridiron, forcing Revenant to live a never-ending life of misery and sadness. Now, unfortunately for Loba, her best friend Jamie, who was supposed to send off Revenant's source code while Loba distracted him, instead decided to hang on to it, but not with any malicious intent. His reasoning was simply that he really cared about Loba, and he didn't feel sending off Revenant's source code to Gridiron would really solve her pain. Sometime later, Jamie brutally gets attacked, and this source code is stolen. By whom, you may ask? Well, in parallel to this storyline, Eduardo Silva, who's the head of Silver Pharmaceuticals and also happens to be the father of Octavio Silva, who you'll know as Octane. See, Eduardo's been building up power over this time, and eventually he's taken over the Syndicate and he's been working on plans across the Outlands. Now, Jamie has no idea of this, 
and he ropes Valkyrie into looking for the source code. But the question is, who else knows? A couple of people that don't know the truth about the source code, but do know that Eduardo Silva's up to no good, are Lifeline, Loba, and Maggie. They find their way to a Hammond Robotics facility on Salvo, and use a hacking thumb drive courtesy of Crypto to steal data from the facility so they can work out what Eduardo Silva is up to. At the same time, Loba finds herself wandering through a Hammond facility, and she discovers something that feels very familiar familiar. Something that looks identical to the facility where she tried to destroy Revenant source code the first time under Skulltown. Upon making it through and finding the end room, she sees a device used to store Revenant source code, but this time when it opens, it's empty. She looks down to find what appears to be a piece of Revenant, perhaps his eye or something related to his source code. Loba takes the eye to Crypto, so Crypto can do his thing and find out what Eduardo Silva is doing with Revenant. It turns out, Silva and Hammond Robotics have been transporting Revenant source code across the Outlands to different Revenant factories. Of course, Loba realises the source code hasn't been sent off to Gridiron after all. At that point, Lifeline and the others see Revenant's eye and realise Loba took it, and they decide they have to go and intercept Eduardo and get Revenant source code. Why? Well, because they know if Eduardo and the Syndicate gain control over Revenant, they will have their own personal murder bot, and in the hands of someone as bad as Eduardo, that can't be good. With all this going on, Revenant has been experiencing glitches, and he's confused by what's going on, slowly losing control as the Syndicate run their tests with his source code to regain control over him. He eventually tracks the eye to Crypto's bunker. Seeking to get to the bottom of what's going on with him, he grabs Crypto. And it's clear, Revenant has become Revenant Reborn. And there you have it, that's how Revenant Reborn came into existence. I hope you enjoyed this lore backstory for Apex Legends, of course there's lots more to come in Eduardo Silva's evil plan with Revenant. So don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with it, plus I've got lots of season 18 videos coming your way. For now though, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.